Hi, and welcome to the Home Assistant How-To with Bearded Tinker. Today, we are going to install Open UV integration. We'll start in 10 seconds. Open UV integration displays current ultraviolet or UV and ozone data from openuv.io. In order for us to start with integration, first thing what we have to do is we have to create account on OpenUV. So let's get cracking. In order for us to get the OpenUV Index API, we have to use our Google account. Let's click on this button. Select your account. And at this point, you have uh, your own API key. What we have to do is we have to copy that. Let's select it. And let's press Ctrl C to copy. Now we can go back to the Home Assistant. There are two ways on how you can configure our OpenUV sensor. The most simple way would be to go to Configuration, Integrations, press the plus sign, and go to Open UV. And here you just enter data you want to use. But we are not going to use that. Instead, we will go to Configurator. And in Configurator, we have to open Configuration YAML file. If, if you are not in the Configuration YAML file, just press the folder, go to Config, and Configuration YAML file. Okay, let's scroll to the bottom of this file. Let's name this integration first. And now let's start typing the configuration parameters of the open UV. This will be open UV column. Next thing that we have to define is API key. So API key. And once again, we will be using secrets file, so type secret. And let's call this open UV API. We must not forget to add our API key inside the secrets YAML file. There are two types of the sensor, and you have to be careful on how you use them. So let me quickly guide you through the API usage. Each free API usage and we are using free api enables you to get data 50 times a day but if you are using integration that is embedded inside home assistant by going to the configuration integrations and clicking the plus sign you will be using two api calls each time you update data if you go through the configuration yaml you can select if you want to use binary sensor, normal sensor, or both sensors. If you are using binary sensor for monitor conditions and you are using normal sensor, you will be consuming two API calls with each update. That is why this component does not do any automatic updates, but instead you have to create automation inside your automations file that will trigger it based on the conditions that you want to define. So this is the next step. And for this setup, I will be using both binary sensor and normal sensor. Let's continue with the installation. Binary sensors. And let's type here monitored conditions. And what we want to monitor is UV protection window. So it's UV underscore protection underscore window. Of course, as with everything, I will be also posting this configuration in the description of the video. So now that we have binary sensors defined, we can define normal sensors. So it's the sensors. Again, monitored underscore conditions and let's start typing all the conditions that we can monitor 
I will not be typing all of them. Instead, I will copy every possible monitored condition we have and I will go through some of them. So these are all possible configuration parameters for this sensor. If you do not define any of them, all those monitor conditions will be tracked. Let me quickly explain each one of them. Current ozone level is displaying current ozone level, of course, in DU. It's Dobson units. I am not that familiar with how it's tracked or not. But it will give you the value of the current ozone inside the air on your area. Current UV index will give you current UV index. Current UV level will give you information about the current UV level, of course, and this is calculated based on UV index levels and colors. Maximum UV index is not the same as current because it will give you prediction of the maximum UV index level expected for that day at solar noon. Next thing is list of approximate exposure time for each skin type. This is approximate number of minutes for specific skin type that can be exposed to the sun before burning or tanning starts. There is a link on Home Assistant page to Fitzpatrick scale and it can help you to find out what your skin type is. So for example, safe exposure time type one will give you maximum time that a person with the skin type one can spend on the sign before it starts burning. And this is it for this open UV sensor and binary sensor. What we have to do now is we have to save it. Next thing for you is go to your sensor CML file and define open UV API key. You have to copy that key that we got from the open UV website in your secrets file. Let's go to configuration. Server control, check configuration. And let's restart our server. Okay, our home assistant is up and running. Let's go to overview. Let's go to weather. And let's add here open UV entities so it's plus entities let's check what binary sensor we have here it's binary next one let's set current uv level let's add index and maximum so current uv index is zero current uv level is low maximum for today is following for the skin types let's add Let's set all the skin types we have in the system. And I think we are missing ozone. Current ozone level. Let's move it up. Okay, let's save this. And this is the information we can get from the open UV sensor and binary sensor. Protection window. Current UV index and level. Maximum UV index for today. Current ozone level. And information on how long can a specific skin type be exposed safely in, in time, in duration for this UV level. But as I said, this is the information that the system will not get automatically. So we have to create automation that will pull this information or update this sensor automatically. Let's go to configuration, automations. Let's click plus sign. 
Let's keep it and update open U UV. Uh, there are two things that we can do. There are two ways uh, you can update the information, or three ways. You can do it by calling the openuv.update data. This will, uh, this will update all the openuv data. You can call the openuv.update underscore uv underscore index underscore data. This will only update information about the uh, uvx index. And the next one is you can call openuv.update underscore protection underscore data, and this will update the binary sensor. It all depends on how many calls to the API you want to save or not. For the conditions, let's select sun. It will be before sunset and after sunrise. Since most of the UV radiation is during the daytime, this will save us API calls. And we will be calling this update every 30 minutes. So every 30 minutes in the period between sunrise and before sunset, we will call service open UV update data. Let's save this. What we have now done is we have created update UV automation that will update, that will be triggered every 30 minutes. But in the period after sunrise and before sunset, we will trigger this service. Okay, let's save this. Let's go to configuration, server control. I always want to check configuration. There is nothing wrong with it, even if you are changing automations. And let's just now reload automations. This way we don't have to restart server and our automation will be active. And first time it will be triggered will be tomorrow morning for me when the sun gets up. And this is it. I hope you enjoy this Home Assistant how-to. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, please leave it down in the comment section. Uh, just a quick note, you don't have to get all the six sensors for all the different skin types. You can find one for you or your, or your family members and then, just get, and then just pull those data out. Of course, you can also make some specific automations based on the uh, current UV index or UV level, so you get notifications. So it's up to you. But this is it for today's Home Assistant How-To. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, please leave it down in the comment section and I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.